and welcome back to the Splatoon 2 tournament here at OdaFest, hosted by the Alberta Squid Swamp. If you are new to the stream, welcome. I am Serena, also known as Kimmy. Uh, I will be joined in a moment here by uh, Yoko and one other person. But in the meantime, you've got just me right this moment. So we're going to be moving on to finals here. This is Team Cephalopods versus Team Dino Bros. Super, di super Dino Bros, I think. So we've got Terror Control here at Scheldendorf Institute. Scheldendorf Institute here is a map that a lot of people may or may not like. Uh, I, for one, I'm not a huge fan of it, and I know I'm not the only one who wishes to see this map uh, not around sometimes. It can be a very difficult map to deal with, as it's got a big glass roof near the center of the stage, and it's divided in half, so you can't jump from either side of it or walk across during this particular mode. The glass roof provides a lot of height for the snipers for your uh, other weapons who have long range and you can't regain your ink on it though that's the only downside of being up on that glass is it's not inkable so therefore you cannot regenerate your ink no up there uh, and the tower here will go from that middle and it'll go across through the two pieces of the glass there so that you can't yeah, get too much on it but there's gonna be a lot of height advantage so you are gonna see a hydra here on this uh, side of team Dino Bros. so he's gonna probably pop himself up there yep there he goes getting the first splat here up on rain and he's gonna prop himself up probably in the location that he can get at that other charger on the opposite team as well as can see the tower from up there as well Probably they're getting a good hit off of Ivo there, the other charger on the team. Oh, and that splat bomb rolling into Bubba. Looks like this will be the push that will keep uh, C4 Pods alive here. Cross super weak over in that corner, but just enough to stay alive and support Ring from uh, coming in with a few picks. Oh, but not before Koki can get in there and smack that Dynamo on down. So we're going to see Koki here kind of move up ahead, try to clear out some of the area up there where Ivo's sitting right now. That charger, a very big threat for anybody on the tower. We are going to see Team Cephalopods here. They are two down currently. The roller just coming back from spawn. This would be the chance now for Team Dynabros to push that tower even further as there's still two down on Team Cephalopods. Ivo and Kiwi there, we see at the bottom of our screen, trying to kind of keep control as there's a lot of pressure coming in from that side, but Bubba popped himself up there to get a bit of a flank going there and was successful to get Ivo, but not quite got Kiwi up there, so Kiwi's still up there and alive. Koki uh, getting the little angle cut on Cross there. Rulers uh, not getting called out, so able to still, oh, take out another and maybe get the jump as well. This feels like the real Koki this time. Oh, Koki. This feels like the real Koki. Yeah, this is the real Koki. Koki, <laughs> Koki, Koki, Koka, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, Team Cephalopods, there was always at one point two players down, and they were able to, never able to quite coordinate enough to oh, keep oh, that oh, push from happening. That so that splashdown is going to be a vital one, and the, another splashdown for the tower here. This might be the knockout. And there it Whoa. is, Team Dynabrows getting their revenge against Cephalopods oh, yeah, for the first go game. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you then. Do you, by chance, know the other people the the that are in the finals so, as well? Yes, that, that was in yours. I know for sure it's myself and a guy named so this is the finals here, so this is a best of... This is still a best of five. Best of five, but yeah. there is a chance for a bracket reset here. That is correct. So if Dino Bros want to win and win it all, they will literally have to win it all. They will have to win. Um, a lot what? of games. Yeah, <laughs> they got one down. They got one so down. They need to win 
five more games. Five more games because they need to win two more right now just to reset that bracket. And then they have to win an additional three to win the round. Absolutely. But hey, if they can take this one game, that might just be enough to start the steamroll. Yeah, they, we could see a not an unofficial reverse sweep here as these two teams have fought it out before already. So we'll see how Team Dino Bros has changed up their strategy to face off against Team Cephalopods. So we are moving on to Rainmaker at, Rainmaker at Muscle Forge Fitness. So we have seen this map before, but in zones. We are now moved on to Rainmaker. So we're waiting for folks to pick into their weapons. Uh, and I really think Cephalopods is giving this time a lot of thought. They want the most effective, the best comps for their team here. Yeah, they might be a little shaken up from that first game there. They need to kind of maybe get their composure, kind of strategize, figure out, hey, what will work best for this map and mode because they haven't seen, we haven't seen this map and mode yet. So they got to kind of figure out what's best for what their strategy is going to be coming into this game. Super exciting. I just got back. <laughs> Here we are. The finals matchup. All right, we're all ready to get rocking and rolling here. Now this map in mode, we do have a area from the right hand side, we'll see a lot of pushes potentially coming in from over there. Because there'll be a ramp on that far right hand top side there, we'll see that a lot of teams will make that push over in that direction there when they have the chance. The only other push I think is doable is taking an incline over onto the left, but you don't see that very often. So a lot of your fights are going to be happening on those right-hand sides of each player's respective sides. Right away here, we're going to see some of the ends up go down onto the side of Team uh, Cephalopods. Dynabros here, or no, this is Cephalopods. Sorry, Purple is Cephalopods, so they're making a pretty good path here to the pedestal for the Rainmaker right away here. Getting some nice crucial splats. Oh, Cross. I don't know if you knew he was there, but he definitely got a nice splat there as a result. Rain going down, two going down on the side of Team Cephalopods though, so they're gonna be very careful as they keep pushing while they wait for their teammates to come and join them. Oh, Cross coming in out of nowhere though. Getting some crucial picks with that roller. Kiwi here doing a great job with the Bob Lobbler, using that uh, ink wall there to protect himself and maintain some good area there, but Kyle's able to finally duke, out, duke him out and get him out of that area. So we did see the Rainmaker reset earlier, so Team Cephalopods now has to go back and try to push that Rainmaker all the way back up again if they want to look for a KO. Dino Bros here just trying their best to defend against Cephalopods here. We're going to see some armor pop off, more bombs going off. This person's playing to my heart here. I am a... Oh, getting two kills with a splat bomb! The Juni here, very good for being able to toss two bombs at once if they've got enough uh, uh, a bomb saver up. So we see Kyle here probably running that kind of a set since he was able to run quite a few bombs right there to get those kills. Flats. Now Kiwi was able to pull back and uh, stay safe in mid, and uh, that may have been enough to stop the Rainmaker there. They were able to get three down, but not the full wipe, which sometimes uh, will be just as advantageous. So this is Dynabro's first attempt now to try and get that push with that Rainmaker, but not before they get taken up by that hammer, and that hammer's still going. They gotta be very cautious now. They've got somebody behind them that is gonna look to try to do any flanks, potentially. Cephalopod saying, we're not ready to give up yet. We're not going to let you take a bracket reset. We're going to do everything we can to make this push happen again. Bubba going down, but not before getting a trade with that Rainmaker. And you'll see again, the last one up. One more time is Kiwi here. Kiwi's going to keep in on a defensive play, make sure they are not able to uh, push in easily. Dynabros here finally getting some points on the board as they look to establish more map control. Kiwi here threatening with the blah blah with everyone gets that Rainmaker before going down himself. Rainbow here trying to see if she can be a bit sneaky though. She's gonna look to see if she can get a bit of a flank. Using the Booyah Bomb to establish control over that Rainmaker. Okay. 
So they're opting to maybe try to see if they can take it to that left path there where the ink rail is. Currently it is now not under anyone's control. Cross taking it back over to the, the right hand path, the path that we see most often uh, being used during this uh, map and mode. It's very good for Cephalopods, even if they don't make any more point pushes, this is just a good push to keep the Rainmaker in that side of the map so that Team Venomous has a lot more uh, uh, map to cross over to make some more points themselves. Yeah, and again, we're seeing with Rainmaker here, a quick push at the beginning, like that first push, um, really sets the stage for the rest of the game. It's going to look like whether you have to be aggressive, 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 and go for Team Wipes, or you can be a little bit more defensive and uh, keep your team alive as you support the Rainmaker. So Koki here, just trying to clear out the area, gain control again, and make sure they can make that push, but just can't keep everyone out as Cross comes in, gets the splat up on Koki, almost gets those splats on Bubba, they're very weak. A few more hits, and Bubba actually could go down as well. Oh. Looks like they're changing up a bit of a strategy here. Coming in with that splashdown to see if they can regain some control in the middle here as they knew that that Rainmaker was likely going to be reset. Yeah, we are coming down into the final 10 seconds of the game. Is it going to be enough to sort of make a final push, switch the control? Overtime is triggered, so there is oh! one last final push. Is it going to be enough? Yeah, it's and it's over! Dinobros was able to come back and got the picks that they needed to make that lead and a solo push up. Well done. Very close match to watch, but the victory <laughs> will go over to the Dinobros. Fantastic. What an upset here. Now the Dinobros just need one more to reset that bracket. So we're gonna move over now to Splat zones on Skipper Pavilion. So this is another one zone map. This is where we saw earlier we were here for the Rainmaker match. So you're gonna see a lot of teams probably split here. There's two ways to get to the zone. You can go down to the very end of the map there where the Rainmaker kind of spawns, or you can come in from a bit of the top area there and pincer the zone. So you have to be very careful though, because it's you have to watch what the other team is doing, or you're gonna find yourself in a bit of trouble if they all group up in one area and push from one direction instead of the, both directions at once. Yeah, so again, it is flat zone, so there is going to be a key component in terms of communication to take control of these maps. The more control you have, of course, that's what's going to determine um, whether your opponents are going to be taking penalties or not. And of course, we've seen in previous matchups that this is really a great way to dictate the pace of the game. Yeah, so communication is going to be very key for this particular map because of the different directions you can come in on this map. You have to make sure no one's going to come in behind you because if you leave your back open to one side, you might get hit from the back there if no one's calling anybody out. Indeed. So as we draw down, both teams are just getting ready. It's going to be interesting to see. We've seen both of these teams have fantastic communication, really excel at working together to turn things around, establish map control, complete all of these little map objectives. So this is going to be an incredible matchup to watch once again. Yeah, just when we thought Team Dino Bros might have not been able to make it back on that last game, they definitely pulled it around. And this is one of those ones that, again, if you can keep everybody out of the zone, you can easily rechange. You can change the lead over quite often in this map. So you just have to make sure that you're always kind of keeping your eyes on both sides, keeping that communication open, and just main, maintain control is the biggest thing, as always. Yeah, so here we are loading into Splat Zones once again. Going to be a great matchup between the Cephalopods in the yellow, and they'll be matched by the Dino Bros in the blue as we get started. Oh, so we see two juniors coming out on Team Dino Bros there. A very interesting comp to see is juniors are not always known as to be the biggest uh, weapon to use in um, ranked modes. We've got Kyle here with the vanilla junior, and we'll have, I'm guessing, I think it's Stevio with the jun vin uh, custom junior. So we've got some rain, some armor, some auto bombs, some splat bombs. Very interesting choices. Yeah, maybe looking to throw the cephalopods off a little bit with the interesting switch. Uh, they probably won't be expecting that loadout, um, but we'll see how that affects both teams. The cephalopods get the initial capture. 
Splat's kind of going back and forth here. Nobody's... Oh! Ivo coming out of nowhere with that Ultra Stamp. Looking to get some good picks. Control the area around the zone. Gets a kill with throwing the hammer. You don't that see that very often. Very flashy, very flashy second <laughs> kill from Ivo. And that's a great way to take control as the Cephalopods. Very stylish, but it looks like the Dino Bros not going down without a fight. They'll look to try and re regain control. Uh, the Cephalopods won't let it happen as the Dino Bros go down to. They're looking to get a little bit of a respawn and a regroup before they go for another engage. Very nice pop with the baller there to keep himself alive, but with three members of Team Dino Bros there, Kiwi wasn't able to stay alive there. Two, three other me the three members are now down on the side of Cephalopods. This is Dino Bros' time to try to maintain some more control, but not before Ivo comes in and just smacks everyone down with that Ultra Stamp. Yeah, he's just styling everybody with that stamp. A great use of that super, and that will turn the control back over into the, the Cephalopods. Still anybody's game, though, as they're looking to build that... Timer downwards, maintain control. Oh my gosh, we're gonna lose two on behalf of the Dinos, but we'll also trade two on behalf of the Cephalopods, make that three and three on each team. The respawners start to come back up, and the control will be switched back by Stevo onto the Dino Bros. Yeah, each surviving member on those teams backing up a little bit, allowing all of their members to jump to them if need be. Maybe some coming in from the other direction there. Ivo again, just mowing people down. He's got that mini Kensa splat link. He's got his ultra step ready to go again. Are we gonna see it come out and catch some more people off guard? We'll find out here shortly. Yeah, I felt really out here trying to get those big flashy kills and the succeeding in doing it, constantly catching the Dino Bros off guard. And that's really what keeps turning the coin control back into uh, the hands of the Cephalopods. We surprisingly haven't seen Ivo use too much of that Toxic Mist. That Toxic Mist we don't see too often, but it prohibits a lot of players from being able to move, being able to regain ink. There's an Ultra Stamp though coming up from Ivo, grabbing Bubba, grabbing another. Oh, Kyle's up there staying alive, but he knows he's up there. There we go, he doesn't need the stamp to get Kyle down. Yeah, they are. It does seem that Dino Bros are getting caught off by this stamp. It's very well played by Ivo. But uh, with the last couple of little ticks of control raining down, are the Dino Bros going to be able to make it back in time? They are not. Team Cephalopod's getting their first win in this finals match here. Not letting that bracket reset just yet. Maybe looking to get a reverse sweep to win this whole thing. Indeed, that will be a very nice victory for the Cephalopod. Again, still anybody's game here. But this is a matchup to watch. Definitely, and while we saw Ivo getting a lot of kills there with the hammer and just in general, another one to mention was Rain. Rain got 11 splats in that last game. So she was putting in a lot of work. The whole team was making sure nothing can come into that zone anymore and keeping them all zoned out and locked in their spawn. Yeah, the Cephalopods really did have fantastic control. Um, big frags on behalf of on behalf of all of their players um, the setup was there for Ivo to capitalize the setup was there for rain uh, they really did a great job communicating and working with each other to ensure that they get the cap so the teams here are gonna take a five minute breather to kind of just loosen up a little bit they're pretty this is a very intense setup right now this is very tense finals we've got a head-to-head -head match here so it's they're gonna take a little bit of break here so we are as well so stay tuned we're gonna be back in very shortly in about four to five minutes so Please stick around for some more great, intense final matches.